guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Taking a look at the dividend portfolio today and seeing how it's doing. Now, before I get into it, you know, typical disclaimer that none of this is financial, legal, or tax advice. I'm not a licensed professional. Um, take everything I say with a grain of salt because it's just for entertainment. It's just my two cents. And consult a professional and do your own research before investing. Now, today was a somewhat brutal day. Um, it hasn't been a great past week, honestly. Um, if you guys notice, I did sell off New Lake Capital Partners. Um, I talked about that in the last dividend video. I just, I wasn't super happy with their their growth or, or lack of it thereof. Um, as well as, you know, kind of the increased risk and it just made me uncomfy. And the new stock, Cigna, um, hasn't really done anything since I purchased it, but those two have been swapped out, if you'll see. Now, um, as you know, I track the portfolio in a spreadsheet because when I buy and sell stuff or get dividends on the actual account, it does not show up in the total gain and loss. So I have done worse than this negative 2.32% and how, how much worse, um, down about 11%. Um, whether you look at it on a XIRR basis or a non to return basis, down about 11%. And that is from pretty much the peak of the market in uh, end of 21. I started this account. So fun time for me, but long term, I think I'll be all right. Um, I think we're already doing better than we were. Not 100% sure, but I've since invested a total of $1,860 at a, a it's at a current value of one thousand six hundred and forty seven dollars and eighty six cents i did add this week's uh, 20 bucks and i have not allocated it yet so i will do that tomorrow most likely um that brings me to a total loss of 212 dollars i have received 68 dollars in dividends since i started this account they are really starting to add up although that will slow down a little bit since i dropped uh, new lake capital that was our biggest dividend payer and i, I don't own an mpw anymore either um but i still have a couple you know higher dividend payers um blackstone is decently high postal realty is like six percent uh getty realty and agree realty are decently high american towers middle of the road so we've got some variety in there um, I have been turning over names a little bit more than I'd like, but um, this is kind of the account that I play around with, um, and <laughs> I play around with this one so I don't play around with my other accounts. Um, so yeah, um, at the end of the day, this is not a like make or break amount of money. It is, it isn't nothing. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I know that guys, and uh, honestly, I do, I do this because I'm very interested and I love it. And in the prob in the long run, I know probably won't make more than the market. Um, but yeah, so Toronto Realty saw our logistics rate down 6.8%. Not too bad. Um, Blackstone has actually come back and been doing pretty well. I'm up 14% in that, and that's with some additional purchases. So the underlying shares are actually up more than that. Um, Signa Group just purchased this basically flat um, health insurance provider and so what is here uh animal health company actually up 14.4 percent they're up 4.76 percent just today um i haven't looked and seen you know i'm assuming there's some sort of news around that but you'll love to see that um equity lifestyle properties uh, another re here negative 1.26 percent um, coming back almost flat on that one. Postal Realty down 3.76%. Um, Getty Realty down 8.82%. Agree Realty down 7.44%. And American Tower, the big loser right now, down 14.79%. So yeah, not overly upset with where anything's at. Um, obviously, we could take the portfolio doing a little better, but this was also kind of like the earnings week slash week and a half. Um, so in the past two weeks, 
there's been a, a bunch of my companies that have come out with earnings, so I figured we'd, you know, run through that like I usually do. I'm not going to be looking for anything too particular, but start off with Toronto Realty here. They increased their dividend by 12.5%, and they did uh, put out the earnings, which I'll pull up in uh, a PDF in a second. 12.5% um, dividend increase, which is nice. Um, American Tower got some operation highlights here. Uh, revenue up 3.6%. Um, that's okay. Net, inc uh, net income doesn't really matter for a REIT. Ch -ch -ch. AFFO decreased 0.4%. That's not great, but you know it is what it is. 10% um, dividend per share growth. Nice to see. Um, and they have a presentation as well, I believe. Up 6.2%. AFFO about flat to a slight decline. Um, they had some foreign currency issues. CapEx. Um, year over year dividend per share growth of 9.8%. That's good to see. Um, spent approximately $30 million to acquire 60 communications sites, primarily in France and Spain. This is a big uh, international player, and nearly half of their properties, I think, are international. Um, let's see. Sold twenty-five million dollars worth of properties. 
um, occupancy is slightly down, but you know, it's still crazy high, so can't complain really. And then their usual crap. Okay. Here we have postal royalty. Post office rate. flow at 7.6% weighted average cap rate, 99% um, weighted average lease retention rate, dividend yield of 6.4%, nice, um, currently at 1,375 properties owned, 99.7% occupancy weighted average lease term of about three years, um, as you can see, it's rather diversified. It looks like 30, 36% is in the south, 13% in the west, 28% um, in the midwest, and 23% in the northeast. It's a highly fragmented market. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they have they have great retention. I mean, how often do you see post offices move around? Um, the dividend per share has definitely stagnated a little bit, but are in a little bit of a tough time um, that's half a year well it's kind of misleading that they would do it like that but okay um, acquisitions are definitely down um, they did mention that on the last earnings call that I listened to has to do with a lot with um, sellers not wanting to come down on pricing so we'll see what happens there presentation. I'll just flip through this quick. Um, 8.7 years weighted average lease term. Kind of cool that 70% of their properties are on corner locations and intersections. 1.7% um, annual rent escalations, 5% dividend yield. Uh, we kind of touch base on a lot of these. Acquired 17 car washes, two convenience stores, one drive through quick service repair for an aggregate of 108 million. Seven hundred construction car washes for fifteen million, um, construction loans for forty million for the development of new to industry car washes, convenience stores, and auto service centers. Ninety nine point six percent occupied. Amazing. Full rent collection. I don't know what normalized. I don't know why they threw that in there. FFO. Oh, FFO is up decent. States to national footprint and 44 new tenant relationships. I don't know when this is from. Oh, it's from 2016. It's not fair. 70% convenience and gas, 15% car wash, 10% legacy gas and repair, 3% auto repair. And then they have their usual trends here calling out convenience store sale increases, fuel margin improvements, vehicles and operation, industrial sales growth. Here's their demographic or uh, geographic breakdown, I should say. Their customers here. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm not too upset, honestly. I'm always looking for things to add. I think I need some more diversity in the portfolio, but not a ton of things that I love in the kind of dividend space, but always open to new ideas. So drop a comment below and let me know, and I'll see you all next time.